Shalom. Shalom to the 12 tribes that are scattered. Now, today's message is just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. That's what we're going to do today. We are going to present just the facts. Nothing more, nothing less. Hard, concrete facts. The text that we'll be looking into today is found in the gospel or the uh, Basora in the New Covenant. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. And as you can see, the title of the message is Rapture Deception. Rapture Deception. Why did I name it that? Because this passage here has done so much damage to people with a false hope that they will be taken out of this world and foregoing or uh, uh, just exiting at a time when the world will be judged. The world will be judged and these people will be raptured, raptured into the sky and uh, be partying with Jesus while everybody down here on earth is going through the wrath or the judgment of the Most High Yah. That is a deception. And we're going to use nothing but hard, concrete facts. We're going to use scripture, but more importantly, we're going to use Strong's Concordance, Strong's Numbers, and we're going to try and just uh, keep it simple and concise to show what we uh, plan on uh, showing here this, uh, this afternoon. Again, the text is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Again, the title of this message is uh, Rapture Deception. Rapture Deception. All right, let's look at our text. And let's uh, let's see right there. As you can see, I'm looking at I'm using the New Living Translation just for the sake of this example. And they have the hope of the resurrection. They don't have the hope of the uh, rapture. They have the hope of the resurrection. As you can see, I wrote my notes down there. The hope of the resurrection and coming, because that's exactly what I'm going to prove tonight. That this is a coming and resurrection all in one hallelujah all right so let me put this over to the side and we're going to go ahead and use my notes here we're going to use my notes and we'll check it out let's see what we got so as you can see i wrote us very simple outline very simple outline these are the keywords that we are going to be using tonight the keywords coming and resurrection Coming and resurrection. One word, two words we're going to look at. These are the two key words that we're going to look at. In the text of uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, the word for coming, when the Most High Yah comes, the word in Greek is G9352. It is the Greek word parousia, parousia. It means a being near that is Advent, often return specifically of Christ to punish Jerusalem or finally the wicked. By implication, physical aspect of Christ's coming, his very presence. So as you can see, parousia means the second coming or a coming of Christ. In the Hebrew, the equivalent here is H. 935. It is pronounced Bo. It is, consists of three Hebrew letters the Bet, the Wa, and the Aleph. It means to come to move toward something. It means to come to move toward something, approach, enter. This can be understood as to come or to go. All right. That's the word for coming. And why am I using these words, these two words? Because these two words are found time and time again in the book of 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. The next word we'll be looking at is resurrection. The resurrection. 
This is the Greek number 386. It is pronounced Anastasia. It means a standing up again that is literally a resurrection from the dead. This is Strong's, guys. I didn't make it up. You can look it up for yourself. G386. Raised to live again. Resurrection rise from the dead. There is another word that is used in the book of 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. It is the Greek uh, word anistemi. It is G450, anistemi. It means to arise, to assume an upright position, to raise or rise up, to continue or establish. It is a Hebrew word equivalent to H6965, kum. It means to rise, to assume an upright position, to raise or rise up, to continue or establish. So as you can see, the resurrection, the Hebrew word remains the same, but the Greek changes a bit. It's still the same Greek word, but it's its present or verb or noun status. That's what changes, but it still means to raise from the dead. It means to resurrect. In Hebrew, this is the word, and it remains the same. 6965, kum. All right? So that's our first word here. Our key words, I'm sorry. Coming and resurrection. Remember those. Like I said, you can always come back and pause the video. Do your own research. So we looked at the two key words of this passage, which is coming and resurrection. Here's where it gets interesting. The word coming is very, very interesting because... Coming means parousia, which means, which means H935, which means the coming, the physical manifestation of the coming of the Most High. So this word parousia is only used in the context of coming, stepping out of heaven and entering this realm for judgment, for resurrection, Okay, not rapture it has absolutely nothing to do with a rapture. Here are the passages that you need to look at. Again, the Greek number is three nine five two, and the key, and the uh, Greek word is parousia. It's found in First Corinthians chapter fifteen verses twenty three. This passage has to do with the resurrection, not the rapture, not the rapture. It is the coming, the coming. And let me say something really important. The coming, if you look at all the Hebrew prophets, when they talk about the coming day or the day of the Lord, they're talking about this Hebrew word here. H935, Bo. Every single prophet talks about the day of the Lord or the coming of the Lord. And the Greek equivalent is parousia. So when you look at 15, 1 Corinthians 15 and 23, and someone tells you it has to do with the rapture, tell them that's, a, that's not true. It has to deal with the coming of the Most High, with the coming of the, uh, the presence of the Most High into this realm. You'll find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 15, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, and you can also find it in the book of 2 Thessalonians. But because I'm only using the rapture chapter, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, I'm only going to use that for today. But I have far more evidence, far more. Okay, the resurrection, again, look at this connection here. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15. The coming has to do with the resurrection, not a rapture, guys, not a rapture. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 12, 13, 21, and 42 have to do with the resurrection, not a rapture. Wow. Resurrection, you're still not convinced? Resurrection, here's the other Greek word. Aniste eimi. Aniste eimi. G450. The Hebrew equivalent is H6965, kum. And you'll find that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14 and 16. The resurrection. 
The coming has everything to do with the resurrection and nothing with the rapture. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Let's continue on. So coming, we're told from the prophets that the day of the Mosai's coming, the day of his coming, the parousia, this would happen. These are signs. It says that he would be coming with the saints to judge. To judge. You'll find that in Jude chapter 4, I mean, verse 14. You'll find that in 1 Enoch chapter 1, verse 9. Zechariah 14, 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 13. So, what am I saying, guys? I'm saying that at the coming of the Most High, there'll be a resurrection. But at the same time, or, or in that period, we're going to have judgment. Judgment. Now do you see why people would want to make up a rapture? Because Christianity avoids this right here. They say they are not appointed to wrath. But this says something else. They will be judged because of their uh, unwillingness to follow the truth. That there is no rapture and the Most High is the Yah or a God of covenant, of God of righteousness and obedience. He wants us to honor His Sabbath, His Sabbath, His Shabbat. He wants us to be obedient. He wants us to Shema, hear and obey. So look at this. At the coming, he comes with the saints. And every single last one of these verses here speaks of the saints coming with the Most High to execute judgment. Hallelujah. Now here's the word that Christians get caught up in. This is the word caught up, which is the Greek word hapatso, G726. It means to seize, catch, pluck, pull, take by force, carry off by force, and pulling away. So this word here is only used one time in any kind of way resembling, resembling some kind of rapture. And that is found in verse uh, or Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, where it says that the son or the son of the, the woman was caught up to the throne room of God. But I want you to take notice of something. This word caught up, harpazo, is where we get the word rape. Rape. It means to seize, to catch, to pluck, to pull, to take by force, to carry off by force, by pulling away. Think about that, guys. Would you want to be taken away by force? Would you want to be taken away by by pulling away violently? I think not. I don't know about you, but I won't take my chances over one single verse to form doctrine. And I haven't done enough word studying on this one here. But I, I can tell you one thing. You cannot form doctrine on one single verse. But then sometimes you'll hear Christians say something along these ways here. And let me fix this here. They'll say, Enoch was taken. Enoch was taken. That word that's used there is H3947. It means to take with tongs. Uh, sometimes you'll hear he was translated. Right? But this word means to take with tongs, like to take coals out of the fire. Right here. So this is a careful, careful taking away. A gentle and very precise uh, taking away of Enoch. But the text says he was translated. This reminds me, brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but the same that Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where it says that we will be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall be translated. That's what, that's what happened to Enoch. Enoch was changed. He was translated. Much the same way Paul describes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Then they'll say something like Elijah was taken up. Elijah was taken up. But that Hebrew word used there is 5927. It means to rise, to go, to come, bring to oneself something up, to lift up, uncover, to expose something. 
or to experience the staff. So the idea here is that Elijah was thought was rolled somehow, went somewhere, uh, was was brought to someone. He was lifted up to uncover something, to expose something. Why? To experience the staff. So yes, is this a rapture? I don't know. I don't see the evidence of it. One man? I don't know. I can't form doctrine on that. Something happened here. But to form doctrine over Elijah, I don't think so. I don't think that's right. I don't think the Most High works that way. We're supposed to study the word on line upon line and precept upon precept. So for me, I'm going to stick with the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Look at this. This is not coincidence. The coming is associated with, an, with a res resurrection and with judgment. Take note of these brothers and sisters. Take note. Do your own research. I'm going to just let you look at this one more time. Look at that. Coming and resurrection. Coming and resurrection. So what am I saying, guys? This is what I'm saying. At the coming of the Most High, at the coming, there will be judgment. There will be judgment and people who are sleeping in the dust of the earth will come back to life, will be resurrected. They will not be raptured and spend seven years or whatever it is in heaven while everyone down here is going through the tribulation. It doesn't exist, my brothers. There is no way. I just showed you concretely using scripture and context, more importantly above anything else, context, 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 context. We see that the coming is associated with the resurrection and with judgment, not a rapture. Please subscribe to this channel. Please support this ministry. Um, and I'll continue doing these videos. As you can see, I didn't use any, anything else but what is available to everyone else. Coming equals resurrection equals judgment and does not equal rapture. Shalom. I hope that blessed you. May the Most High bless us all and may He continue to manifest and show us His truth. Shalom.